call the meeting to order. And the first piece um, that we're going to get at is the minutes from 511. Um, thank you so much, Mary, for sending those on. Um, did everyone get a chance to look at the minutes from Mary? Yeah, well done, Mary, as usual. As always, very detailed. There's only three pages this time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I feel like you're getting it though. You know, I, I like that you're capturing some of the key pieces because I think if anyone wants to really be able to understand what's happening in our meetings, they could read your minutes and know. So that feels really good. Anyone have anything that they want, want to mention in the minutes or anything that needs to be shifted or typo, anything anyone caught? Looks good to no, me. Nothing. Okay. All right. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right. Um, any further discussion? All in favor of the minutes? Aye. 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 Nice job, Mary. Okay. Um, my apologies if I'm a little glitchy here because I feel like um, as I'm trying to move from screen to screen, this was happening when I was trying to log on to, um, my computer was being really oddly slow. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into, oh my goodness, my dog is now scraping on the screen. Hold on. Here, also Zoom. <laughs> All right, um, we're gonna jump right into um, kind of some, some catch-ups on past projects. So um, did everyone see the request from Yoni Gagauer for, um, it was a physical letter that he sent in, it was attached to the agenda? Yes. Okay. Um, Amy, do you wanna um, briefly talk about why he's asking for the extension or do you want me to go over that? Okay, I don't have that right in front of me because I didn't know, uh, but I did send it to everyone. I can pull it up if you want, but I just wasn't prepared. I didn't know you wanted me to be prepared to talk about that. Do you want me to, I have it right here. Do you want me to do something, read it, uh, summarize yeah. it? I don't know. I think just reading it out loud would be helpful. Reading it out loud? Oh, yeah, okay. Thanks, Mary. All right, so dear Chairperson McGrath and CPC members, I write to request a three month extension for our fiscal year CPA project titled, fiscal year 21 CPA project titled Scott Tower Revitalization Phase One as approved by the Holyoke City Council on 12-15-20. The goal of this project is to fund the acquisition of approximately 14.1 acres of land north of Scott's Tower Anniversary Hill Park and begin primarily site design. Condition five of the CPA grant agreement executed on 12-14-21 states that the term of this project will expire 6-30-22 with the option for the recipient to request one three month extension to the deadline for good cause. Shortly after the CPA allocation for this project was approved in late 2020, Kestrel acted to pre-acquire the parcels from the developer and hold onto them until the city would be able to secure the remaining 50% of the needed funds, $300,000 total. My office applied for the Mass State uh, stateside Land and Water Conservation Fund, uh, LWCF grant on 2121 for the remaining needed 150,000 with the hope of hearing, receiving final award approval late that summer. Uh, though DCS did recommend our project for full funding as early as April 2021, the required final review and approval by the National Park Service took an unexpectedly long time and was only finalized earlier this month, May 2022. The needed LWCF funding is now secured and is headed for city council vote to accept the grant at their upcoming meeting on 6-7, following a positive discussion and review with the Finance Committee on 5-23. Though everything is in place to move quickly at this point, there is still not enough time to completely execute the purchase and sale agreement and finalize the conservation restriction 
by the current 6-30-22 deadline. A three-month extension to 9-30-22 will allow the city and Kestrel to properly carry out all necessary steps of the process. Sincerely, Yoni. Yeah, he did a really nice job of just succinctly walking through the process and naming why they were asking for the extension, which I really appreciated. It made it really clear and it's in writing, which I love. Um, is there any discussion in, before we move to a vote on a approving um, or, or not approving the extension request? I make a motion to approve the request. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And very exciting that land and water came through and everything is coming together, right? Like it's it's part of a wider process and, and it's a bit of a gamble every time you're like, I think we, we're gonna get this grant. Let's let's do this piece where we're matching everything, right? You didn't have to come back to us and say, I didn't get it, can I have the rest of the money? <laughs> you know, so that feels really exciting. Yeah. All right. Um, the next piece on the agenda, um, I just wanted to update um, on the Merrifield playground is now in progress. So if you, uh, as you're on your next jaunt through the city, make sure that you're stopping by Merrifield so you can see it because they're currently installing the new playscape, which is really exciting that that is now in, in motion. And the, um, that um, a picture of it was actually in, um, um, I thought it was in a gazette, but actually it looks like a piece of the same article was um, published additionally in on Mass Live about later liberty. And then the bottom of it included information about Mayor Field. So it was sort of an interesting like piece of an article that then got republished elsewhere with a little bit of an add on about Mayor Field. Um, but there have been a few really good stories over the past two weeks that have been following the progress on Lady Liberty, which I'm sure we'll hear about later when we get to current projects. Um, uh, and um, the other pieces, um, the Merrifield project too. Um, the other piece I wanted to mention was on Jackson Street. So uh, the houses are really close to completion now, which is really exciting. These are the two Habitat for Humanity homes on Jackson Street, the um, first time homeowner housing. And I had an update from Amy Giroux um, who's project lead on that, that they're going to hold a home dedication uh, ceremony on July 15th. And they have been in contact with the mayor's office. He has it on his calendar and their marketing person is drafting a press release for the event, which they're going to share with us. So I'll make sure that I send it on to you if anyone else wants to attend or just be aware that it's happening. But exciting. I feel like we've, we're now finally into a, a, number, a number of years of funding cycles where we're seeing projects come to fruition and be completed, which feels really exciting. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, we're gonna move to talking about the MIFA murals project and then we'll start getting into the FY22 projects. All right. Um, Don Sanders and the wonderful crew, um, take it away um, in terms of helping us hear what the progress is and we'll talk a little bit more about your project and understand it a little better as it's, it's morphing over time. Oh, you're muted, Don. Make sure you unmute. Here I am. Yoni just came in. Yoni, we already approved it and you're good. <laughs> You're good, Yoni. I don't know if you could hear me when I said that. You're still coming in. You I, know, I, did, I, I, I you're heard you. I, are you talking to me? I, I was saying Yoni, I wish. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yoni, we read your letter out loud into the record and we already voted on it. You're good to go. Wow, thanks, y'all. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Long meeting for you, huh? <laughs> that's, the, the, that's how you would want it to work, right? <clears throat> Sorry, my voice probably sounds very strange and it's just because I have insane allergies. All right, um, John, um, go ahead and, and take it away. Great, I'm sorry, I just, I had a little trouble getting into the Zoom, but here I am, it's great to see everyone. Um, so, um, I, Jeff is um, joining us, I think, is he, that, yes, via, he's in LA, and uh, you know, we're very excited. Uh, and I think probably, Jeff, maybe smartest thing for you is to kind of uh, 
do your show, huh? <laughs> and then we could we could talk. Does that make sense, uh, Megan? Yeah. yeah, great. And I asked Rachel to uh, uh, take yeah. the screen. You know how, um, Rachel? Yes, Meg. Um, do you mind giving me access so I can share my screen? Thank you. Okay, you should be good to go. Can everyone so, see um, the screen? So yes. these are, as you all know, we picked up the uh, murals from Holyoke, uh, I guess it was earlier this year or late last year, some several months ago. And uh, this is the condition that we received them in. So just, you know, they were taken out. What year, Don? About a dozen years ago, I think, right? Yes, years. actually, they were taken out in, uh, well, a good 10 years ago. Yeah, from the theater. Yeah. So yes. um, they weren't properly stored. They're in very fragile condition. You can see in this slide that's up there now. No, go back one, please. Stay with that. Uh, but next one, uh, Rachel, the double. There, right there. So the way that they were stored, um, they got wet. Uh, there's a lot of planar distortion. All that, That's all black mold on the back of the, the uh, organic adhesives. They weren't, weren't removed uh, and they were severely um, infested with mold growth and bio, you know, bio growth. Uh, the ends were crushed. They were in really, really, really bad shape. Um, go to the next one. E even there were uh, wasp nests and you can see the stains of the water and, and mud daubers had built nests on the backs of the murals. So they were in pretty horrendous shape. Uh, keep going. Uh, here you can see the planar distortion um, and they're on very thin canvas to begin with. They have a, a heavy dark overlayer. So the first thing we had to do was to assess their condition, get them off of their, the rollers they were on, get, they were um, faced with paper towels, which is not anything that anybody does in the conservation community. So we had to get that off gently without removing any paint. Um, go to the next one. Jeff, you keep saying a word and I'm not, I don't think I'm holding on to it. You keep saying something and then distortion. It starts with a P. Planar distortion. That means that they were wrinkled and they weren't in plane, P-L-A-N-A-R, planar distortion. It means that they weren't smooth, they're wrinkled. And so ultimately- In, in like a rigid way? Like, it, so they no longer lay really flat when you put them flat? Or precisely, precisely. So what has to happen to them ultimately is and, and, and if everyone, I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with the, with, with the plans, but the original notion was to uh, restore them, put them on exhibit. There are eight pieces, which I'll show in a minute. Um, and they're in varying conditions as I'm trying to demonstrate now with, with these photographs. And ultimately the, we have to stabilize them, uh, consolidate the friable paint, the paint that's literally flaking off, as you can see in these photographs. We don't want to lose any more. Uh, we have to reline them on a stable backing because the backing has been compromised both by the microorganisms that were growing on it. And, uh, you know, we removed the adhesive. Uh, we removed all the bio growth. We killed the bio growth. Um, and then we had to test them to make sure that we could get the gross, uh, there's a, a coating that has darkened enormously, uh, this varnish layer that's obscured them. So I'll just keep showing you the images. So this is, you know, the condition that we got them in, uh, a lot of missing paint, keep going, Rachel, there we go. Yeah, a lot of missing paint. You can see the scale of it. Um, let's keep going. And so here's our tests, our solvency tests we did. And then here next are the results of our solvency tests. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you can see that we can get the overpaint off. It's not easy. 
There's a lot of stabilization that needs to happen. And because they're in delicate shape, we only want to do this once and not restore them to a certain level, display them, where, whether it's in the city hall or in, I understand there's also local museum is interested, but, and they're quite large. So what we suggested is that we go ahead with the restoration and the conservation, but only do one of them as a kind of you will pilot project, which could be uh, have an educational component, show people what the condition was beforehand with photographs. Let's keep rolling with the photographs, Rachel. There we go. So these are our exposure windows, proving that we can remove the varnish and stabilize the paint. I think there's one more, if I'm not mistaken, maybe two more. There we go. But you can see that the color is vivid underneath there. The murals can be, you know, next photograph is context uh, of the, in the theater where they came from. Uh, and go to the next one, if you would. So here they are in a little mock-up that we made and, and you can blow this up, I suppose, and get a sense of what the imagery was when they were removed. Uh, on the left is the war mural, on the right is victory. And what we would propose, go to the next one. And so this is how the canvases are. So there are eight canvases. And uh, our thought was that we would choose number five on the right-hand side, the upper panel, which has the image of victory because any of the other images, either because they're in bad shape or because it's not a complete image, it doesn't read as a coherent picture, that number five could be the one that we would do as a pilot project for display and go through all of the processes of uh, emergency stabilization, consolidation, over, paint remo over varnish removal, uh, in painting, relining, putting it on a new, on a new backing, and then have it also because of the size, uh, but mostly because you can see the image of victory as a coherent, you know, it's not cut in half as it's number six or number five, four, or number even number three is largely decoration. So the proposal currently is to do that one as a pilot project, restore it completely, display it somewhere, and then in the meantime, stabilize and uh, do the con conservation treatments to the other seven panels. And, and not display them uh, because they're so fragile, but have them ready to be reinstalled at such time. Well, first of all, stabilize them so they can be stored properly for an unknown indefinite period of time and then have them ready to be rehung once the theater comes back online. Or if for some reason that doesn't happen in our lifetime, then the, at least they're stabilized and they could be uh, you know, put back in another location or whatever might happen to them, but that they should only be treated once. They shouldn't be treated twice as a full display and, and reassembled because a great deal of the work is integrating each canvas with the other. In other words, where the seams are and you only want to do that once. So that's a quick overview. I can go into any details if anybody has any questions, but hopefully that gives you an understanding about what we're trying to accomplish. Yes, thank you. Michael, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, um, Jeff, Mike Falsetti, I'm, I'm on the committee here. Can you tell me, uh, in panel number five, what is the approximate uh, overall uh, length and, uh, and height, if you will, um, of that particular panel, the physical size? It's over on the left, 79 inches by 140. Which- The uh, one that's called Lunette 5. Oh, okay. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. yep. Right. I mean, in that picture, they look so small, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, big. <laughs> that's the that's thing. Big. You, have to, you have to, this is Don interjecting. They're 22 feet high. What we're looking at, each one of the, the all together, you know, is 22 feet high and about, what, 11 feet wide. Yeah, yeah they, almost they, 11 and a half feet wide. Yeah. I went two foot tall. Yeah. So it's also a matter of the size, what's manageable, transportable, presentable. And then, as I said, ultimately, 
we could design display depending on where they're going to go and and what content we want to have you know who the audiences will see them we can create a series of boards showing the before and after in the process and you know kind of make an educational uh display or exhibit uh which i think would serve two purposes one to so people know what they're going through but also i think to bring some awareness about the overall theater restoration project to the community and have some way of out because obviously the theater closed as it is now it's kind of quiet stage no one knows what's going on and it could be you know used as a kind of poster or poster child if you will for the uh you know for the overall restoration to get you know generate some know that there's forward movement mm -hmm. yep uh, any other thoughts or questions michael uh yeah uh jeff uh so <clears throat> what you're saying is both the war panel and the victory panel uh, in your opinion are, are they're both capable of being fully restored to what they once were Yes, there's a great deal of reconstruction that'll be needed, particularly in the uh, panel one and two, uh, the lower panels, because that's where they had the worst water damage, as you can see in some of those earlier pictures. That, but yes, uh, you know, we, we had great success once we tested it in removing the obscuring over varnish, and we can stabilize the paint that's still there. Obviously, the paint that's missing, we'll have to reconstruct. But uh, yes, they can absolutely be restored. And the plan is um, for the sake of uh, letting the rest of the city know what they have in store for them. You intend to do number five and hang that perhaps uh, in city hall or in the city council chambers as a way of uh, displaying uh, and what's capable and what's coming down the road, if you will, when the project is fully funded. Would, is that yes, correct? That's, that is the plan. Okay, thank you. If, if um, I could, I okay. I'm so sorry. I, I believe Ms. Seeler is here from Wisteria Hearst, and I don't know if she wants to weigh in or just say, you know, what she's thinking. Um, yeah, it, it was my understanding that City Hall was not a viable option. I think Bob uh, Parrott spoke to that. Um, the city engineer, yes. The city engineer, yeah. So um, my concern is that, you know, I hadn't seen any of the specs for the mural to be installed. We have limited space and we have a lot of our own activities that go on consistently. And we, I would, I would really, now that I have the dimensions, I can kind of see if it would fit in the space that we were thinking of. Um, but I'd also need to know how much access people would need to the building when they would need that access. Um, just things like that to know if we can actually be a good candidate for this project. Um, so if I can get any more information about what the timeline looks like for the installation, um, how much access people would need to the building when they would need that access for the installation for any sort of check in. Um, and then, you know, I can look at the dimensions and see if it would even work in the space that we could put it in. Um, personally, I have a really soft spot in my heart for WPA murals. I think a lot of audiences would really enjoy the conservation work and learning about it. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to see what I can do, but I definitely need more information um, because, you know, if we're gonna have this on loan long-term, you know, we have to enter in a contract. We need to know what accessibility, you know, the people need for this project. You know, there's so many unknowns already and I haven't seen a concrete plan of like what this project would look like on site here at Wisteria Hearst that, I don't feel comfortable saying yes or no at this point. Well, can I add that the exhibit component is not designed yet. This is only a concept. And to, you know, to answer your questions, there need to be a lot of conversation and back and forth to understand what needs to be done and how it's to be done. It's, it's a concept to have a piece. In other words, when we went to City Hall, I was there a couple months ago, and we met with uh, the facilities person. And we looked at it and we said, this, and, and, and at that point, the idea was to create one entire mural. And I cautioned against that. I said, this is not a good use of resource. It's uh, uh, an awkward space. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of money and, you know, and then you're going to have to redo it. And, and it was my suggestion that we do it in a, in a limited way as an educational component. But that's strictly a concept. Now, if 
people think that's a good idea, then we would develop the exhibit component and try to, and all the questions that you answered are absolutely the right questions. Try to answer those questions as specifically as possible. Uh, and the idea would be to do as much of the work offsite so that in terms of exhibiting it on the museum and whether there's a, a you know, an, an educational board with text on it, how, ma how many photographs, whether there's something auxiliary to the panel itself, all those questions need to be asked and through a, a collaborative process and discussion, find what makes sense. But probably the install would be, I, I think this is part of your question, would be just a couple of days, you know, lighting has to be considered, of, you know, how it's gonna be hung or, or supported, you know, whether we put it on a rigid frame, all of these are questions that need to be asked and answered. I don't know what the space is that's being considered. So the process it would be a process of asking questions, answering them back and forth to design something that would make sense. I mean, that all sounds good. It's just, you know, I, I was brought in to say, is this even something you can do at Wisteria Hearst? Um, and I'm just giving you what my honest feedback is about what I can, what I can or cannot commit to. Um, I, the CPE has to make a decision based on, you know, whatever it is that they need to consider. So as far as I'm concerned, I can't commit either way. And I would need, you know, I didn't really hear about it until after my name, like after the museum was already kind of put out there. And so I just, that's where I'm at with this project. So I'm happy to, to work with anybody to see if this would be feasible. But at this point, I, I can't tell the CPA that I, I can commit to working on this or not because I just don't know enough. That's just where I'm at. Yeah, and I think one of the questions that we had um, is, is if this is the same project or if it is so substantially different as to just require a different process, which means it goes back to the application next year. Um, one of the questions I have just around allowability or eligibility is around um, if a piece of something can be restored with CPA funding um, versus all of it, right? Even just sort of as the project is sort of being staged out. And the other piece I have is just, you know, you can, I can see that the, it, it seems at least from looking at these images that the war mural is, is more damaged than the victory mural. Is, is that accurate? That's accurate, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're, really we're looking at each of the eight pieces individually, so, and, and the images I have are of pre-storage, all right? So they're not a, a particularly accurate representation. Okay. All right, that helps. Um, so one of my questions is around, you know, I know there's a fine line between recreation and restoration, or maybe there isn't, <laughs> but no, in, you're in terms of- You're absolutely correct. This is conservation. Our approach, uh, is to preserve as much of the original fabric as possible. We're taking a pure conservation approach. The in-painting and you know, reconstruction is only where parts are missing completely. Yep. So wh where does it cross the line between conservation and recreation? I only mention that because recreation is explicitly forbidden by the legislation for CPA versus restoration no, this, or conservation. This is conservation. I had suggested to them, uh, uh, by point by by way of comparison to Don, we had also prepared a proposal to completely replicate them. And he said, no, absolutely not. We have yeah. to hold on to the fabric. This is one of the character defining features of the, of the entire theater. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most important parts of the theater. And he was adamant that uh, a pure conservation was the route he wanted to go. So I, I don't think there's any worry that okay. across anywhere, we're not even anywhere near that line. Right? Okay, thank you. Um, Amy, you had a question? Um, yeah, I was wondering like two questions. One is, um, Jeff, do you have actual images um, to work from for the really damaged mural, like the one on the left, like original images? Yes, well, what we would do is once we've cleaned it and restored it, we know what the color palette is and we have a fairly good photographs from before they were taken out. Uh, they're at oblique angles, but we can correct those on the computer. Now they are obscured by that darkened varnish, 
So uh, we have good images. We can accurately recreate everything that's, we have his style, we have his color palette, we have, we know what the imagery should be. And so we can reconstruct it very accurately. And I would say that it's probably less than 10% uh, is, is missing. Mm -hmm. And when you say these images are pre-storage, um, that means, um, is it possible they're even more damaged now since you don't have images of the way they appear now? No, we do have images of the, we document every part of the process. So what we've done is we've unrolled them. What I'm trying to say is that the, the images which I showed you, these composite images are when they were still on the wall. We have images of the condition that they're in now We've documented that completely and we've stabilized them. We've, you know, there, there will be no further deterioration. Uh, you know, we've gotten the, the bio growth off the back. Uh, we've got the, the pacing off the front. They're stabilized right now. That's how far we've taken it. But we haven't, you know, until we, until we know what we're gonna do with them, we haven't proceeded with the actual conservation work. We know that we can get the varnish off without losing any more of the you know, original fabric. Um, so that's very successful. We're very happy about that. We know we can consolidate what's there and, and, and hold on to everything that's still there. Um, so, you know, we, we, we've done enough work to stabilize them and know what's required. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you so much for coming. I think this this really helps us to understand where it's at right now so that we can, as a committee, talk about what we think about how the project's morphed over time and then just what the next steps are. Okay, well, I'm sure you'll be in touch with Don and he'll communicate with us what, what our, our marching orders are. Thank you so much, we really appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you all for uh, having letting me present to you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks everyone. Good evening. Okay. Uh, Megan, do you have any more questions for me or can I add anything to the... <laughs> yeah, happy to have you share anything that you wanna share. And then I think that the biggest piece is, you know, clearly we believe in the project, right? We funded yes. it and, and put it forward yes. to the city yes. council before. Yes. Yes. The question just becomes, um, despite believing in it, it is substantially different of a project and maybe some details still need to be hammered out based on what Ms. Um, Seiler said. Right. So I don't know, I'm, I'm leaning towards, it might need to be a reapplication, but I feel like all the pieces are here. It's just sort of packaging it under like, you know, his presentation along with Wisteria Hearst details and it's moving it forward. Great. Well, I, I just like to say from, um, from uh, my standpoint, from MIFA's standpoint, our absolute objective is to restore the, the extant murals completely and as professionally as possible. I don't think, you know, I can reiterate what Jeff's uh, credentials are. He's being very modest uh, uh, and that they can be restored. I think that's the most important thing. That's what was important to me and my board and uh, organization. So our goal is to totally restore them and put them back uh, in the restored theater, that's the goal. Um, this idea of the exhibition, which I love as well, because I think it's a, it's a gift to the city and it's a it's an expression of the rebirth. It's the victory <laughs> of Holyoke in a certain way. Uh, and I feel that to make it to to Meg Seiler, I you know uh, I know that she was in, included in this very late and and as Jeff said, he did not have uh, could not set, give her a set of actual dimension designs and so forth. But I think what he's saying is that if it's right, I personally think. It would be wonderful in uh, Wisteria Hearst as an interim. I think it would be exciting for the public, uh, and I'm, I have a feeling that, you know, Jeff it could work it out. I mean, I, I would love to see that happen. I apologize for it's not being able to be able to present it to Megan in a way that you could, you know, you know, say when. And I I understand that completely, um, but I do think that that would be a great. Uh, and I'm particularly moved by your. Uh, 
uh, love of or your affection for the WPA movement, which these murals are really some of the most spectacular examples of. So that's what I want to say. We're, we're committed to having this happen. I think I just love the idea of um, the city being part of it. I think it's very important. Uh, we will work with you in whatever way, as I said, with the exhibit, the, uh, the insurance. I just want to reiterate about the money. It's more than was originally when we found out the condition. Mitha uh, has that and is ready to put that up. Uh, and I just, I would love to go forward with the full restoration and creatively um, understand where the exhibition will be the best. And I think it would be great in Wisteria Hearst. So uh, we want to work with you and, uh, and make it happen. Thank you so much, John. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Happy for that way too. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. <laughs>
assembly hall of, uh, of the War Memorial Building, it is in the Art Deco mode, the same mode as, as, the, um, as reflected in the inside of the Victory Theater. So it would not be out of place to put them in the uh, War Memorial, the, the War Memorial Assembly Hall. It's a very adequate place as far as I'm concerned. And I think, Madam Chairman, I would vote to fully restore both panels, regardless of what happens to the Victory Theater. It's really, our, it's, it, it's, it's an iconic piece of oil history. And once it's restored and hung in the, in the War Memorial Building Assembly or uh, main room, it, it can stay there forever until the victory is done, regardless of how long it takes. Um, I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, my, that certainly does sound in many ways better to me. I am, you know, I, do you know, does anyone remember why the War Memorial was not considered? Why did they only look at City Hall? Okay, we just don't know. So I can send a message out to Bob Parent, um, the city engineer, um, and go from there and just ask about that. Okay, so I'm gonna send a note. Um, yes, Amy. Can I just share that I'm looking right now at the document that was sent to city council mm -hmm. and um, it did say to restore the Victory Theater murals for a temporary public exhibition in the Holyoke City Hall ballroom until the Victory Theater itself is fully restored so the murals can be returned to the theater from which they came and um, it says the murals, let's see. <laughs> will be fully and professional re, re, uh, professionally restored to their original historically accurate condition and exhibited for the enjoyment of the public. That was a measure of success that they were given. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm hearing two substantial changes there, right? One, that it's about being held in, as installed in the city hall ballroom. Mm -hmm. And the second, that there's an element there of there, them being on view of the public. Right, those were the conditions they voted on. So that's why I, this I is believe- the, uh, But this is where it's so, oh, I, yeah, finish Amy, go ahead. Well, that's why I believe that um, it's a different project that city council would have to approve. Um, and yeah, I think there was some reason why they said the war memorial, I, I, that sounds familiar that they said it couldn't be done at the war memorial, but I don't remember. The well, the biggest why. piece that I'm hearing from Jeff Green is his professional opinion is that we shouldn't do that, right? Like, that's why he's saying, let's just do that one lunette number five. It's the most stable. It's the one that can be restored and sing, you know, on its own as a panel tells a story because there are some of the pieces that are just not, like you can't install them somewhere and then take them down and put them elsewhere. They won't survive. So meaning just so, only that one panel would be on display and then everything else would be restored for some future murky time that they could go somewhere in the theater. Well, here's my thinking is that, let's say the War Memorial comes through and it is a good place. You could do something along the lines of, they will be stored for 10 years. At the end of those 10 years, they will be installed in the War Memorial if the theater's not, right? And uh, you could do something like that. But I think what I'm hearing is effectively where you put them, it definitely thinks it should be like a permanent installation and that some need to sort of be installed, you know, and, and restored on site in some ways. Well, let Jeff Green decide that. I mean, that's his, we're presuming we're not preservationists. Let him decide that. But, but um, he, he's saying if you put it in the War Memorial, he thinks it should stay there. And Don Sanders is like, nope, this is Mifa's. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like no, there's a real conflict there. No, well, I mean, that, that, that Don Sanders is the head of the project. He, that he's, he's, he's the guy putting the bill. Right. Uh, Jeff yeah, Green is going to start it. But then he, well, no, and, yeah, and we're in the new budget, a we're only 50% and Mifa's the other 50. Yeah. Well, Megan, we're making a mountain out of a molehill. The location is, whether it's City Hall or War Memorial, it's not, a, it's not an issue. Either place is fine. The fact that they're fully restored, as John pointed out, the more we wait and do just one panel, prices don't go down. No, he wants, right to do, he wants to do all of it. Yeah. But there's no, only one. No, even Jeff Green does. Even Don Sanders does. They want to do all of it. 
but yeah. they want to store the panels in a restored form. Fine. And, and then and with only one of them on display because he's worried about being able to display them. Some of them are so fragile without them being, um, without there being some degradation. Marco, you had your hand up before. What did, what did, what did you want to pipe in with? I, I, I retracted because I, I reconsidered, but since you called me out, I, I, I wasn't, I wouldn't, I now wish we would have asked with more clarity because my understanding is that the restored one could be moved later on, but you didn't want to move all of them. Yeah. But, well, it, so I, I think he's correct. saying there's a few that are so degraded that you have to just do it once, and but that, that there require, are others that are. Uh, is it just the letter that went to city council? Because can't we amend the letter, you know, send out an amendment or a, uh, you know, uh, uh, an addendum, uh, you know, explaining that as, you know, as the situations evolve, but is that a complete reapplication on, right. I mean, it's, it's like we're sorting through the issues and a path has presented itself and we're just going to update them on the path. And that right. seemed it completely could be communication to city council. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the lunette that they selected that, that looked nice, you know, it had, you know, victory looked like, I don't know if it was holding up a torch or a, a laurel wreath or something, but it, you know, it's an inspiring piece. And, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see, pe to get people to see it. Mm -hmm. um, Megan Seiler, do you want to weigh in? Yeah. So um, these WPA murals, they are incredibly delicate. Um, they cannot be moved multiple times. So part of the issue is, you know, if taxpayers are paying for half of the restoration, you do need to consider what will happen to them permanently. Um, so saying, you know, how long has, has this project been going on for the restoration of the theater? Is it good to use public money to do a restoration project that might never be seen again? I mean, that's an ethical conundrum and you, you want to be careful, especially, you know, I was in my budget hearing yesterday and they were like upset about CPA money being used on private entities. And so I think it is worthy to consider, do we move forward? You know, does the committee move forward on that if it cannot be moved again? And having, I think Meg McGrath had, you had such a great idea of saying, if you had it in the contract that if something isn't done with it by 10 years, because once it's in storage, you know, look at how it was stored previously. That had been done by another restorer who had put that in storage and it got ruined because of that. So it becomes really sketchy with these WPA murals because they are very delicate. They used less of it, like they used cheaper materials to get it right. done. You have to be very thoughtful with where it goes and how long it stays there and what conditions it's in. So like here at Wisteria Hearst, we don't have temperature control in our main building, which is the only place that it would fit. Um, so having it installed here, not an option long-term, not a good idea. Having it at the War Memorial, they do not have temperature control there. Having it installed there long term, not a great idea. So it's it's up to, I'm just putting in my two cents of what I know of restoration work. Um, I worked on a project in Detroit with a mural of the same time, same quality. Um, it wasn't a WPA, but it was a, a, a UAW mural. But it, it, you do have to be very careful about moving forward with something like this because you cannot install it twice, just like he was saying. And one that's in good shape could be on display, but you do not want to mess with these on multiple occasions. And if half of it is being funded by you all, you have to, like, I, I would consider that carefully. And if, and if Donna has been working on this project for a really long time, will it ever see the light of day? We don't, you know, you have to, cons like, that's something that shouldn't be taken lightly, I think. That's just my two cents of what I know of conservation, what I know about these murals so far. I mean, it isn't something that should just be like, well, it can go anywhere because it really, it can't go just anywhere. But that that's just, I, I just thought I'd weigh in because I have experience with some of these things. So yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. Hopefully that was helpful, <laughs> but thank you very much. It's hard because I think we're, it's between a rock and a hard place. Like we have these murals, they have a significance. We'd like to see them preserved. We want to see them restored. And yeah. the theater's not ready. And that's where mm -hmm. they're supposed to be. 
And, and so what, right. I just, I just feel like we do not have any great options here. Helene, your hands up. Yeah, sorry. Um, I have had, I don't know, like 12 hours street of video. So I am resting my eyes. Um, I just was wondering kind of, cause I wasn't around. How did it, like, how did it come to be that it was going to be in the city hall? Like, was there some sort of, cause it sounds like, did Bob Parent not know that until after, or was it just the so, history, yeah, the so history incredibly that. more kind of, they, they were just so much more fragile than anyone really conceived of. I mean, there's all sorts of reasons. It just, yeah. Um, and it's, and it's hard because I, I hear like, I, I mean, I think that having one panel displayed, I guess, I feel like is maybe the good. That's not the enemy of the perfect. I don't know about getting the rest of them restored now. It makes a lot of sense, but if they can only be displayed in one place in the whole city, then that's definitely something to know and be considering. Um, Cause it sounds like if they can't go into the, like they can't go into city hall and certainly all of them all put together can't go into a stereo rehearsed, um, obviously. I, it's just, it's hard to know um, exactly like the practicality of it, um, but having that one available to put up and to enjoy, you know, it just seems like that might be a good, um, that's where we're at now. Um, and in terms of, I guess, and just in terms of like how to deal with it, whether it's a brand new project or not, I'm just like, you know, if it's not able to be at City Hall, not because the project was like, you know, changed by somebody on purpose, but just because of the matter of it, it being rejected after the fact. I don't know. It just, it feels like they're sort of, um, like it's, it's just hard to, uh, it just seems like there's got to be some flexibility in in what we do based on the fact that we're working with things that are so delicate and and you know and so to have things be so kind of subject to having to be reapproved seems like a lot of hassle and um, so anyway I'm just kind of asking mostly like how that ended up in in the in the in the proposal that that got approved by city council. I think the real piece was that that tension was always felt, right? Between wanting to restore the murals and not having the, the theater ready to display them in. And there was a feeling that it didn't want to encumber funding because this is the second time we've given money to MIFA. The first time they had the money for three years, the time, but it was very contingent on like, if the theater is ready to be fully restored, we will restore the sconces. We'll put our money towards that. <clears throat> and it was all based on just like the earmarks are right now at the state level. The CPA money was contingent on the project moving forward. So if in three years you don't have the funding fully ready to start the building, then you don't get any money for sconces. And then three years lapsed and the funding was returned. So when they came back to us and said, well, we, would, we also have these murals, um, we think this is a different kind of project where it's not just this, um, you would give us the money for three years and in three years it would return to the coffers. <laughs> it would be something that you could do on its own as its own independent project, independent of if the theater ever gets fixed or not. But the problem is as we're delving into the details is I'm not sure that's true. I think that was the hope, right? but they had been stored for a long time, right? I, I'm not even sure exactly what the timeline is, but at some point they are taken down and then they're, they're given to the VTech, right? Who already they were, they were really damaged, right? When, when he received them, then they were there for a number of years where there was no clear plan as they're, they're, they're waiting, right? To be restored. And then they realized they wanted to move them to Jeff Green, who you know, had this set up to be able to store them temperature controlled or whatever, right? Like all of that stuff. Um, and he's the head restorer for the whole project, right? So it was sort of like he could do the work on these murals. So I don't know. 
I just, I think maybe we want it to be something that it can't be. What do you think, Mary? Okay, so I'm hearing just about everyone saying something positive about going forward with this because they want to restore these murals. Can we separate the location out of it and still have it go through tonight as a restoration alone? I think that there's actually a few layers here now, right? It's a previous DPW head had said, yes, it could be the city hall without running it by the city engineer. And then the city engineer, when he looked at it, said, that's not doable, right? We cannot put these over the seal of the city. And that's really the only place they can go in the city hall. And, and the city engineer is, is thinking in terms of installation and buildings, right? But he's also not a restorer by trade, right? Then you have Jeff Green, who's like, you can't install them and uninstall and reinstall. They won't survive. They're pieces that cannot. Like, so that piece was... We didn't have him on board when we initially looked at this application. He's an expert that has sort of come in secondarily. Although if I'm remembering correctly, VTAC, although I think he was just willing to work with them to try to make it work, also said something very similar. Like, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> Maybe we weren't listening carefully, but I remember him putting a shadow of doubt in my mind around like, oh, yeah, reinstalling to reinstall sounds really messy. But I also think maybe there was a little bit of an assumption of like, you'd install them and they probably would never come down. You'd be installing them there permanently. So it'd be fine. Say we would never be moving them to the Victory Theater. So the Victory Theater would never really be fully restored. I think there was a feeling of that, right? But now we're also hearing from someone who's a, you know, worked with murals. Well, you can't just have them in places that are, have no central air at all. have no air conditioning. They will degrade. You can't just put it permanently in the city hall. You can't put it permanently in the war memorial. And I think honestly, that was in a lot of people's minds. They were never gonna leave. They would be there forever. We're now hearing that's not even really a good option. I think that does change things. John and then Amy. Um, yeah, yeah, actually um, you just kind of uh, said what I was gonna repeat. Um, I thank Megan for sharing her experience with us at the Detroit um, project because I uh, yeah. one thing that rang a bell is climate control, and you know we have to be very careful that wherever these do go, that that's available. Otherwise, they're going to deteriorate again in the future. The other thing is not to put a damper on, but I think I think the Victory Theater project has been around probably over forty five years. You know, and and there's there's such a gap that I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll probably never see it open anyway in my lifetime, but I'll tell you, um, I'm not optimistic they're gonna you know, get the, the one to finish that project um, and get that Victory Theater open. I, would, I hope I'm wrong, but um, you know, it's just taking forever. So I think what you said earlier, Megan, anything you should say after so many years, they go permanently somewhere, but they're so fragile. We have to be very, very careful as far as where you choose to put even the one panel and then I think part of the, you have to have thought, part of the thought process is if 10 years or whatever that never goes by and the Victory Theater is not restored, where do they go? And you get down to even something like the War Memorial, who has ownership of the building or ownership and possession of the murals. I think that's where you have to get a law department involved. But it's just, to me, this, this project, as I hear more and more about it, gets there's more complexities to it. I think there's probably among many of us agreement, we'd love to see these restored. We just be very, very careful as far as where it goes temporarily. If it went in some place that it goes permanent, what the environment is to make sure they stay preserved. And those are, those are questions that are going to take a while to get answered, I think. Do we know if there's any place in the city that has the, pro the appropriate climate control? I mean, is there any place in Holyoke that has that? We have an awful lot of old buildings, Barry, you know? Yeah. But. I mean, I know that, I mean, granted they're working on this big overhaul of the city hall. Um, and I don't know if Central Air will be a part of that, but I highly doubt it. But you got the winter conditions too. It can't be, you know, 
It's true. And, and then these are going to be huge. I mean, you, I, I think part of the decision, the thought process has to be, okay, if they don't go permanently back into the Victory Theater, these things are huge. You know, so, you know, where do you put them where they'll be aesthetically complementary? And again, you get to climate control issues, et cetera. So there's some challenges around this. I think it's going to take a while. Amy? Um, yeah, just uh, some of the things that John was saying I'm concerned about. And I mean, what I'm, the fact that uh, only the, now the project is just one panel that the public would see, and then there's it's not clear where that would even be installed or that that would even work, just makes it um, very different from what was said to city council about how the public would get to see the murals. Um, and um, in this case, the public won't get to see them and may never get to see them, um, except for maybe that one panel and only if they can find a place to install them. Um, and one of the things that I just always found difficult from the beginning with this project, you know, because I've been drafting the contracts is that I never really had enough information to even draft a contract. And I still feel that same way. I don't have enough information you know, to draft it. And, and I mean, and if the rest of the murals, I, I guess I'm unclear if, if, if the murals are, are really going to be restored, it sounds like they have to be restored and in the place where they're going to be permanently installed. I, I'm a little confused about this. Or are they saying that they, they would go ahead and, and restore all of them, even though only one panel would be on display? Yeah. I think he's saying they would all be restored. <laughs> but they would be kept stored like they should be stored in, you know, the restorers facilities. They wouldn't be installed and then take, re, you know, peeled off yeah. and then reinstalled. I think yeah. it's that process of like physically plast, you know, plastering it on and then having to take right. it down and move it. That's, that's the piece that they seem to be most concerned. Yeah. About. And I think um, Megan Seiler made a really good point about, this, you know, there has been a lot of, you know, critique about, uh, you know, CPA funding going towards um, private institution or, or whatever nonprofit. And, you know, there are different ways of looking at that. But um, it's just that if the funds go towards like restoring these large murals that are not, it's that there's, there's no way for the public to enjoy and there's no like guarantee that they will get to see them. Um, that seems like that could be um, cause people to, you know, have difficulty with it. And the public may, um, may dis disagree with that decision, so. They might, but you know, if we, courage of your convictions, right? Like if you believe the murals really should be restored, then you find a way to try to restore them. So I, I think that is the crux of it for me. I think there's a lot of reasons why it would be really easy to walk away from this project. It's easier, <laughs> too complicated, done. I think it's harder to say because it's murky and it's complicated and we're trying to figure it out. It's not complicated. You're making it complicated. It's not complicated. It's doable. We're not gonna split the atom here. We're just gonna restore two murals. The Hoyle Public Library has got a lot of space in it. You can, you can, you can store those permanently for a long time, as long as they're sealed properly. And I'm sure Jeff Green knows how to do that. And, and, and we can put them someplace uh, in the city until they're, uh, until the place is met, but it's- I mean, no, Jeff, Jeff Green is saying he won't do it, Mike. Well- Jeff, Jeff Green is saying is, you is shouldn't normal. install and then uninstall. All these, we're not, I'm not saying install them. I'm saying restore them, then store them until the victory is ready or at some point in time, um, we make a decision, like in 10 years, that the Victor Theater is not going to happen. At least we have two restored panels that we could find somewhere to do it and hang them. It's not that difficult. We're, we're, we're nitpicking ourselves to death here. This is, we're not going to split the atom on this. It's not that difficult. No, it is in the sense that we have to have the details on paper no somewhere. Question. And, and we have to have... All night. If you think, if you th what, are we, what are we here till midnight? I mean, when do you want to end this? What kind of questions you want answered? You're so, I mean, don't be mad at me, Mike, just because I don't have all the easy answers. I don't. <laughs>
I know it's frustrating. I think it is too. You're making it more difficult than it is. Look, we can say, sure, let's move forward. But guess what? What that got us is here. And we approved this project over a year ago. We have yeah, nothing I mean, on paper. It's not we have no world. contract. We have nothing that says this is actually going to happen and the money's still encumbered. And yeah. until we have a contract, we don't even have a ball game. We need a contract, well, which means have Don, you, it's have like Don and Amy get together and compose a contract or John and I. But with, that's uh, my with, point. Uh, is Don compose a contract. What we are figuring out tonight, Mike, is what those contract terms are going to be. Like we're, we're literally starting to be able to name them because so far trying to chase those details down have been very hard because it's constantly evolving. There's new information, there's new people, right? Like Jeff Green arrives, he's got new information. And then the Bob Parent, he's got new information. Megan Seiler, she's great new information, right? These are all things we didn't have before. I didn't have Megan Seiler's information until tonight, right? So it's sometimes it's like getting the band together we're trying to get the right voices, the right information in the room, because we have to be able to draft a contract. Like this cannot go on. <laughs> I agree with you, Mike. So those pieces, right? What I'm starting to hear is we're, we're wanting to develop a contract that has some very clear language about them being restored, about at least one panel being displayed temporarily in the city as part of a curatorial exhibit, which by the way, like MIFA's gonna have to pay for the curatorial exhibit piece, CPA can't, right? We can't pay for the stuff that goes around the restoration. We can pay for the restoration. We can't pay for the panel that describes the restoration or the photographic process, right? That's gonna be something that MIFA has to, has to do. That has to be in the contract that they have to pay for that. We can't, but it's still required. We have to, make sure that they are working with whether it's, you know, Miss Seiler or whether it is um, Eileen Crosby at the library, like whatever that is, we have to make sure the location is, is determined. And like, I mean, photographs, like it will be on this wall. Well, let's get the information, <laughs> Megan. We're going to be here all the, we can't answer those questions this evening. We don't have the answers. No. Let's get the answers and then we'll have another meeting to discuss it. But I think we're, we're going around and around on this we're tonight. I we have to name those pieces so that we can then tell Amy, make sure to set this up or go do this, right? It has to be delegated. But the concerns or the things that we want to figure out have to be named here tonight before we leave. Um, Mary and Helene. Um, Mary, you want to start and then Helene? Okay, so um, uh, Megan first. You, this, uh, I have two questions, one for Megan and, and then a whole bunch of them for Michael. Megan, uh, I understood that it had to be decided at this meeting. Is that correct? Because this is the end of our fiscal year and after this, they have to reapply. Is that correct? Did we officially vote on that last meeting? That was what I said my preference was. Oh, I see. I thought I also it said I think be done we, this way. I also said, I think we need a policy, which we haven't voted on. That's like after a certain amount of time, if you haven't you know, developed and signed and executed a contract, your project just is defunct. Like we don't have a policy, but I want that. <laughs> right. Because for, this on project, right now. for this project, is it true that we must decide tonight? Because that was what we said in the last meeting. So that is not true. That's my preference. Okay, right? so that's I, a I preference, it's it not true. Oh, okay. But I'm hearing, I'm hearing from the group that the desire is not to just say, sorry, it's too substantially different funding is unencumbered, try again, reapply next time, we'll go through the process again. I'm hearing we're willing to continue working with you and we'll go to the city council with whatever that process is, we'll figure it out, me and Amy, and go forward with some, some shifts and, and to the scope of work. But we won't tell them we're unencumbering the funding and you're trying again. That's what I'm hearing. If I'm wrong, please let me know. All right, can Michael, can you, can I ask Michael a couple of questions? All right, so we, we, we took a vote and we sent a letter in regards to that vote to city council. And I, I don't know if that passed with city council or not, but um, Michael, my first question is, what would you do with that? Would you amend it? And, and if so, what details would you put in the amendment? 
would you say that is completely wrong and you want something different? What details would you put in? Because I know that most of us voted yes for two reasons. One, we all like the idea of the murals. And two, there was a convincing argument about them being in the possession of Holyoke for the fu- from now into through the future. So how would you correct the promises we made in that original letter if we were to go forward with this tonight? Well, all contracts, all contracts can be amended if both parties agree to it. Um, basically, what it comes down to is, are they worth saving or not? If they are worth saving, well, how do we do it? Well, we want to restore, as far as I'm concerned, I want to restore both panels. Now, when we asked Bob Parent, he objected to having both panels placed in the City Hall Auditorium because that's a Gothic building. Architecturally speaking, that's Gothic. It'll clash with the uh, with the panels, which are 1920 uh, uh, style uh, uh, WW. Well, it's it's that style, the 1920s Art Deco style, if you will, and it will clash with with Gothic, which which the City Hall is. It's a Gothic structure. But he did that for aesthetic reasons. It wasn't because- No, no, that's not what I heard at the meeting. Plus you're getting off. I just want an answer. <laughs> what, what do you, what would we do to change our request? Well, I, I would say we'd, re- we'd find a location that's workable and we amend the dollar amount and the time and that's it. And I don't think they're not, they're not significant. The, the need is still there. We haven't changed our mind. The need is still there. I think we're just nitpicking ourselves. We have to go back and do our homework and, and, and before we make those answers, then may write up a tentative contract for the approval of this committee and, and one of uh, Don's committee. Yeah, I, I don't see if two parties are agreeing to, uh, the, to, a mod- to modify a contract, it's not the end of the world. It's done all the time. There was no, all right. Okay, thank you. Colleen? Um, yeah, so yeah, I was, I was thinking about that, but at least now it's not modifying a contract because there hasn't been a contract. And if the idea is, you know, it, it sort of gets modified from whatever the tentative contract is, it's definitely, I mean, I think uh, like I'm going a little bit full circle here. I mean, it's, it sounds like part of the problem and I wish the timing wasn't where it is because Part of the problem is that you can't really make a full contract because there is just so much that is still up in the air and would need to be worked out. And so you could have the contingencies of like, all of this has to be worked out. But, you know, the problem is if Mifa comes back and says, oh, well, we found this piece, but we don't like it because it's like not, you know, temperature controlled, but it's all they can do. I do, I wish that, you know, there was a way where it could be like, give us the plan of where they're going to be. And you, you know, really vetted it with the venue or whatever. And, and then we'll write a contract because it puts Amy in a really difficult position to, to try to do that. Um, And, you know, so if this weren't a situation where there was really like intense timing, then I would say, give a time frame where that has to be done. And I think that could be done in a contract. It's not impossible, but I, you know, I just worry that then there becomes a place where it's not an easy amended contract because MIFA thinks that their plan of how to display them is just fine. And we think it's not rigorous enough, but you know, it's all they can do. Do you know what I mean? So I guess I, I am wary of at this point, after all this time, that there still aren't really clear contract terms, that there's not really a plan. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, you know, that, that to me is, is just like practically going forward, it seems like that would be a really big challenge. Um, If, you know, they did come up with a plan that was like a clear plan and presented it, in the next round, I think it would obviously, you know, be very likely funded, but um, 
but I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just weighing in on a tentative contract can be good in theory, but not always in practice. <laughs> and there are just so many details that, you know, that can't be answered, not just today, but in the next, you know, sounds like like the next three months. So. Well, it sounds like a good next step is having um, Jeff Queen and Don and Megan Siler consider Wisteria Hearst to see if that's even a place that the panel could be, um, you know, presented, exhibited. Um, Megan Siler, I don't know if you're, if you're still there and able to respond, but one of my questions is around how long it could be displayed before it could see some degradation. Um, I think if it's in good condition, it will be fine um, for like a year. I, I don't think a year or more would be okay. We have several paintings that are not in temperature control, temperature control currently. They are of higher quality materials um, and they're doing, a, they're doing just fine here. Um, more than a couple of years, I would say I'd be uncomfortable committing to because of the materials that were used in these WPA murals. Um, so that, that's another thing I would go over with Jeff Green if, if he were to come on site um, and, and have a meeting here and say, here's what the conditions are in the house. You know, based on my experience, this is what I'd be comfortable with. Do you think that that will be, this would be a stable place for that one segment? Um, the, the place that I would have available is on the second floor. So it doesn't get the same amount of traffic um, or sunlight that the main floor gets, which was another consideration for where I would put this, this segment. Um, so that way we can control how many people are going in and out. Um, we can control the sunlight there a little bit better um, to help keep it in, in good condition for as long as possible. Um, but again, I just got the dimensions this evening and have no idea until I go in that room and actually measure if it would even fit in there. So that was something I requested before this meeting so I could have even better feedback to give. But, um, you know, like I said, I, I do really love, I think the murals are great. I do think they're worthy of restoring. But again, I, you know, I can only do so much with the limited information I've been given. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. John, you know, hand up. Yeah, um, keep in mind too, the other thing I heard from Jeff Green is the fact that these now are, um, they're protected. In other words, there's no further deterioration that's gonna take place of these murals because they've kind of cleaned them. They've gotten enough stuff off them that has to be removed. So it's not like we're in, in sort of a, uh, you know, a fire sale here right now. And I think I caution about moving impulsively. Yes, we got all out to see them restored but it's not like these, these are sitting around now and further, further deteriorating. So I think you've got time to get some of the critical information you need to put into a new contract. Okay. So I feel like the next step is reaching out or with some communication between sort of the, the stakeholders here and seeing if we even think Wisteria Hearst makes sense. And then I think in the next meeting, we need to talk about that, right? If it is, great. If it isn't, what's our next plan, right? And I, I think it's sort of walking through the devils in the detail, right? Like, I just think that's true about the victory in, in general, right? <laughs> it's really important that what we do is practical and, and, you know, one of the pieces of the scoring guide is around is something going to go to fruition, right? Is this something that's a realistic project? So, you know, this was a project that felt realistic. Then kind of the pieces fell apart around why it felt realistic. Now we're trying to piece it back together. It's messy. Doesn't mean we're not trying to do it. I think we are doing our due diligence and trying to move it forward. I also think sometimes, you know, life is messy. <laughs> you can't always know everything when you want to know it and some new information appears someone who now has a cru crucial perspective is now involved in the project I, I don't think in other words that this was an applicant that didn't do their due diligence their application was very detailed 
right? They had a, a restoration plan um, from the restore at that time, right? It's, I think there were some pieces that weren't fully thought out around location, which we're realizing is actually the most complicated part of making this realistic and actually happen. And that's what we're trying to figure out now. Okay. All right. Um, I want to move to updates on FY22 projects. Um, so, yep. So is there, so that the, so is this continued to next meeting or it's just left? That's the end of it? I think it has to be continued to the next meeting as we discover more from Wisteria Hearst as a possible location and then follow back up. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll also send a communication to Bob Parent to figure out just a little more about the War Memorial um, as a potential backup site, even if, for example, Wisteria Hearst doesn't have the dimensions to host that panel. Okay, updates on FY22 projects. Um, so the Girls Inc. piece is sort of just moving through the small, the, the slow rather gears of government. So you have, um, you know, it's gone to finance, so through a couple different rounds, it's at finance right now. Um, I'll I'll listen in on the meeting. I don't intend to speak because um, I feel like I've I've spoken my piece. I've shared what I can about the project. I've shared what I know about restoration, and I think it's way more complicated than it was initially presented in the initial legal opinion. Um, and I think Kathy Dugnan has done a lot of research since then to try to understand you know, where the case law is, the Department of the Interior Standards, the Department of Revenue, like there's a lot of information to understand. Uh, we met two weeks ago to check in on what she was thinking about the Girls Inc. opinion as she was re-reviewing it. She's gonna be presenting what she has decided at the meeting tonight at Finance. So in the next meeting, we'll have an update for you in terms of what they decided. I think it's possible that part of the project will be found eligible and move forward and another piece might not be. Um, I also get, am getting the sense that they're going to make the opinion as narrow as possible so it has no precedent. And I think moving forward, they're gonna work with us so that this doesn't happen again, is the sense that I have um, in terms of just running pieces by them and making sure that we have done our due diligence. So a lot of what happened came out of applicants creating materials for us, not for city council, not to prepare to go to battle, right? Um, the applicant wasn't thinking, how can I say things in just the right way? How can I present information or make sure I have all of these specific details to back up the case if I get, you know, if this becomes an issue later on down the road. So I think in the future, we can work with applicants to make sure that that kind of information is just in their application. Um, so that if we think that those questions are going to come up again, because I think they will, right, prove to us that it's not maintenance, prove to us it's not repair, prove that it's part of capital um, improvement and that it is part of restoration instead of repair. Great. We can include that in the application. We can make sure that that applicants are already thinking about that and putting forward the information so that it's there. Because a lot of the legal opinion rested on, well, that information wasn't shared but it wasn't shared because it wasn't required as part of the application, right? So I think that that's something that we can fix as a committee moving forward so that we don't end up here again. Any questions on that before we move on? Um, Amy, do you have any other updates that you wanna add about current projects? Um, okay, so um, current projects, um, I'm just looking down my database here. I know we still don't know. Um, we still haven't heard back from James Linfield. I mean, we, I, you know, on Wayfinders um, because they have, his legal team was is still apparently reviewing the uh, draft contract. Um, and that falls under says, past contract, past projects, right, Amy? Because that was last year. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm just, it's still okay. on my mind because it still hasn't been resolved. But okay, let me look under FY22. Um, okay, so let me see if there's anything new to share here. Um, um, uh, 
I know that um, as of May 23rd, in terms of the uh, Wisteria Hearst project, um, Megan said um, the RFQ, this is Megan Seiler, the RFQ should be posted this week. Next will be the on-site visit in early June for bidders. Hopefully we will be under contract by July, unless the bids come in much higher than expected. If all goes well, we can be done before the end of fall, but there are too many unknowns at this point to know for sure. Um, and phase two of Anniversary Hill, let's see, um, they've been submitting invoices. Um, well, the, actually that was the last time that happened was back in December. Um, let's see, in terms of the Miracle League, I'm still waiting to um, hear back, I think from, I drafted something and I'm waiting uh, to hear back. I think Bob is reviewing it still, and or maybe Carrie, I'm not really sure. I think they both might still be reviewing the contract. Um, I think that's it for FY22. All right, let's move into communication with FY22 applicants. Um, Michael, do you have anything to share about Lady Liberty? Well, it's pretty nice. Um, uh, if you've seen it, uh, it's way better than I ever thought it would be. It's yeah. almost startling, the difference between the I two. I didn't understand it would look like that. I really didn't. I didn't either. <laughs> uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, was, I was pleasantly shocked. Uh, it really is quite something, um, and and the other parts of the component are that are going to are that are painted in the same br dark bronze style, if you will. Uh, the next part is washing the base and the composition of the uh, of the uh, pallets, the tablets that are going to be on the ground, looking up of the men that are um, that have that are, who, who are so honored uh, in, in the statue. Um, so it's coming along. Uh, it. it the uh, I want oh. to show this picture behind you just so that folks can see what it looked like when right before they started, and then this is what it looks like now. Wow, you know, that's really great. the treatment they did um, to return it to what it would have looked like before it was oxidized hmm. um, is something else, and they they treated it with something where this will I thought it was going to be this temporary thing. Right. Like, oh, she would look nice and shiny again and give it a year or two. She'd be back to being, you know, that that green again. But the way that they they treat it is so that it will not corrode again and won't oxidize so that she will continue to look like this. So um, that was something new that I learned. Yes. And they have to put another light. They have to put another finish. It, it, what it's now, uh, the paint now or the restoration composition is setting up. It's got, it takes a week to set up and firmly uh, dry and adhere to the statue. And the next is to put a lacquer type of finish onto it to seal it from the elements. Um, that's the next part of that story. And then there is the cleaning of the base and, and the, right, uh, these, the uh, actual tablets on the ground being installed. But it really is, um, I, I, you'd have to get out of your car and, and look up at it. It's, it's far better than I ever expected, quite frankly. It's, it's great. Uh, so that's the status of the statue. It's coming right along. The War Memorial Building hasn't been started yet. Um, I don't know why. Um, they did but, a test patch. Well, I, I went I know that. The, okay, well, how, how did it look? So they did three different test patches to see which cleaning method they wanted to use um, and ran it by Bob Parent, and then he picked one. Okay. Um, so they're supposed to, they were supposed to start this week I think they were supposed to start Thursday or Friday. So I think they should be starting tomorrow or the next day. Beautiful. No, that's fine. I didn't no. see the, I didn't see it, but if you saw it, you and Bob are good on it. No problem. Yeah. Bob has sent a picture of the three test patches to show like, see what they're doing. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Mary. Okay. So my question was up for Amy it was during Amy's talk. So uh, I just wanted to know, uh, have, we've got, have we got contracts uh, signed for all of the fiscal year 22 projects? Not um, for Miracle League, which is what she was yeah, talking about. Yeah, not for Miracle League. And of course, Girls Inc. we're still not sure about yet. Yeah. Everything else, all yes. All the others have been, yeah. Woo, 
that's never happened before. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. Okay, but all of the others we do have signed. Yeah, and then the the two from last year that we don't yet have is Wayfinders and the Mifa murals. Okay. Um, and James, part of that was because there was no point in having a contract with them when they didn't have funding assurance, right? So now that funding assurance is set with Wayfinders, the contract is in their legal department and they're supposed to be getting back to us quickly. Okay. Um, Mary, do you have any other updates from your two projects? Yeah, okay. So you heard tonight they, uh, for the anniversary hill, um, he asked for a, an extension. Um, they, uh, before it can be, um, that before they can finish writing the contract and, and get going on, um, uh, you know, hiring somebody to uh, do the next phase. So you heard that part. Um, in regards to Blue Tac, um, they fi they're filing an RDA, and there's that's going to be processed. Uh, okay, resource area delineation. So in the um, work for the uh, the trails. They're going to be going across um, streams and wetlands, and uh, so they need to establish what their um, uh, boundaries are and uh, what they can and can do can't do, and that has to be filed with the conservation commission, and that's their next step, and that's happening now. So that's where they are. They they have, uh, I guess, a list of employees, and they you know, they're just going through who their project managers are going to be. So it's moving. How are they recruiting to Holyoke Youth for the summer work? They did that already. That was um, at the last meeting we, I reported on that. They okay. uh, had a, um, they had a hiring day uh, in city hall. I can't remember what the date was. And um, they had 40, they have 42 um, um, eligible local applicants local youth. So I don't know that they're hiring 42, but they have a list of 42 who absolutely fill the, um, the requirements. All right. That's great. Marco, do you have any updates for any of your projects? No, I don't. You have this, um, the stained glass. Or no. Well, I have to admit, which, which I, I have not have? followed up on anything in the last couple okay. of meetings. So I, I'm caught flat footed on this meeting. If I was supposed to look at uh, coordinating any projects, I apologize. That's OK. Um, would you know, remember which two you were supposed to be communicating with? It was one or two and they were both historic. I recall, but I, I recall the communications. I don't recall the details. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I will follow up with you to figure out which ones you're supposed to be communicating with and making sure you have, you know, I might have messed up too. I might have not sent you the email to start the whole piece. So forgive me if I didn't do that. And well, here I am calling on you. <laughs> sorry about that. And I, I, I do recall that we, we, they, we were dividing up the uh -huh. projects. And I, Mary, maybe you have it in the minutes. Okay. You can just you know, retrieve it at some point. Not doesn't have to be volunteered. So um i i think just i've i've somehow less and if it was in an email I'll, I'll look up emails from you and from amy i i in this i don't have it not. in front of me for uh, i know in the last meeting um it was the last meeting or the meeting before that we named who would be doing what the meeting before is where you named who would be doing what and you said that you would send out an email to yeah. the applicant and to the um, person it was assigned to. I might and have, then, have uh, not done that with you, Marco. And, and last meeting, you said that you had not sent the emails out uh, in regards to that yet. So did you I do did it? did afterwards between okay. um, Maribel's following up with the um, Ely um, Park project and everyone else was in contact already, but Marco, I might've thought you already were in contact, but you weren't. So again, the goal is just that like once a month you're checking in and just saying, hey, what's going on with your project right now? <laughs> um, and Amy has a piece too, that's in the contracts that we're allowed to ask for, which is on the quarterly piece. We're supposed to ask them basically for like a short report, 
Like what has been done so far? Do you have photographs to show the work? Like stuff like that. I will totally catch up. I just tried to go, I sorted my emails from you, but then a whole bunch, you know, like, you know, there were several. So uh, if, if you like, oh. I can, you know, continue the search offline. And then if you want to send me a fresh email, yeah, that'd be okay too. I will. Okay. And Mary, maybe you can help me figure out which were the ones he was supposed to be in communication with, and then I'll get that going. Well, I uh, remember um, Helene was going to be um, Miracle League, I think. Yeah. Helene, did and you I don't think any, I think that was in contact with them or no, because it may be that I didn't set that up either. I haven't been, um, although I did, I mean, I checked in with Maureen and my understanding is because, I mean, it's kind of at parks right now to some degree with or Bob Parent, like that, because the contract hasn't been done, but I think that's largely because Maureen is waiting to hear, you know, it's time to sign because it's been reviewed. So that's my understanding of where that is that, and Amy, I, I heard that um, you're very involved in terms of getting that done. So I, that's, that's what, you know, I think that's my understanding of where things are is just finishing that language and um, working out details so that then miraculously can like the organization can go forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds good. And I will send an email that sort of formalizes that too. Um, Cause I think the goal is, you know, Amy and I were talking about it this week. Amy's thinking all the stuff she needs to take on. <laughs> Right. Like we have Andrew who's helping do some of the, the budgetary stuff, but Amy's actually behind the scenes doing a lot of work, trying to figure out now how to take that slowly over. Right. She's trying to work with the auditors, trying to work with to figure out the budget books, trying to work out like all those pieces. Right. So like long term, it's something that, you know, she can work with and can own more of. And she's writing all the contracts, which legal used to do. So the piece that we're trying to figure out with communication is like something has to go. We can't just keep giving Amy more and more things to do without sharing any of it in the committee. So I think it's just trying to figure out how can communication be streamlined. And when you do your monthly check-in with them, just make sure you CC Amy so that she can be on the emails and see people's responses if she wants to. And then we'll also share out here, right? It's okay if you're showing information here and that's when we're really learning about it. That's the point of us meeting. Okay. Um, this is a little bit off topic, Mary. I'm so sorry, because it really is a past project, but I'm also concerned about the uh, Mary Garon project, and I just wanted to sort of name that. Um, I'm not getting any communication. We're trying, <laughs> we're emailing, and we finally did hear back at one point that they were having an issue with their restorer, and they weren't sure about the standards, and could they do four jumper horses and not standards? And we looked at the Amy looked at the information we sent to city council, and we realized we hadn't specified it, and we said, "Sure, you could do four jumpers," and. Then we responded with, okay, well, you can do four jumpers, what's happened? And we didn't hear anything. And then we didn't hear anything again. So I emailed that again today and just said, you know, technically your, your deadline is, is July 30th of this year. Um, and you haven't produced any progress to show that it's happening. Um, and the communication is just, it may be that they have sent them to the store, but we wouldn't even know, right? Just because we're, we're trying to get the lines of communication flowing more freely. So I emailed that um, and, you know, we'll see where that goes. And I said, if you don't, if you want to get an extension, you have to come to a meeting and, and ask for the extension. You have to do it before July 30th, your project's considered defunct. So hopefully that gets them going and they will come to our meeting and we'll reach out with more information and we'll go from there. But I did want to share as a past project that it's, it's in one of those pieces that I'm still trying to figure out what's happening and are they making progress or what, what do they need to be able to make progress? Um, the um, bronze plaque uh, for Miriam Miranda at Ely Park. So um, Maribel couldn't um, come today because it's her daughter's prom. Go Maribel's daughter. Um, but she had done her due diligence to reach out um, to Maureen to try to figure out what was going on with the sign. Um, and she ended up talking to Carol. Um, and she said the project is, is being delayed because the new director for Parks and Rec is taking um, is, is coming on today, June 1st. And also they were waiting to hear back from Din Brothers, the company that will make the plaque. 
Um, and so that was her update about the um, sign um, that's going in Ely Park for Miriam and Miranda. Okay, is there any other update that we have to share for FY22? Okay, I think we're moving to other. Um, oh yeah, there was there was one. What about the JFK Memorial sign? Is that one done? Oh, yeah, you said it was with Mark uh, Mark Joyce last time, and it was going to be done. So is it done? It's, no, again, that's a past project that would fall underneath last year. But yeah, it's it, the, for the permanent signage is still not done, and the temporary signage is still up, and it's not great. It's always falling down. I'm not a fan. <laughs> So yeah, I don't quite know what's going on there. <coughs> we'll keep checking in and pushing for it to be done. Okay. So he, um, he did, there is one update with that, that he said he sent the final report, but it was odd because he um, said he was gonna like leave me the flash drive or something. And then I emailed him back and said, could you just upload it on this? I created this folder for you on Google Drive because it'll be easy for everybody to see it, you know, everybody on the committee. Um, and then I never got a response. So, but I'm going to be going, you know, when I, as soon as I can to back to City Hall and I guess I'll find this flash drive, you know, um, with the final report at least. So, yeah, if you have it on the flash drive, you can still convert it to a Google Drive file. You can put, you can do the work for him to put it where it should be. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of other, so video project update, um, Lewis had a medical procedure last week. So we weren't able to meet last week, but he emailed me to say that the rough cut is done, which is exciting. Um, and he's going to try to send it this week and is sort of doing the final editing and putting it together. Um, and then subtitles and all of that stuff. Um, so that's exciting. And it means that by next month, we should have the completed product, which I'm really excited about. Um, uh, the graphic design work. So we, I, we had reached out to the woman who had been doing some work on the website for us to, you know, like maintain the website and that sort of thing. And I had asked oh, her about she, what, sorry. Amy? I was just going to say, she does a lot. She actually designed the logo. Yeah. She said she really developed the whole website at the start. So she did a lot of work. So. Right. So she's a graphic designer by trade. Um, and also does some, some work on websites. And I had talked to her about this idea for a map where you could then uh, have the videos and text and images and like we're something we could build out over time, right? If we has more and more information about projects that we complete. And she did some research and sort of um, came up with a number of plugins that are really all effectively Google Maps um, or look like Google Maps or use Google Maps or plugins that are very similar. Um, and I think the main piece is that as a graphic designer by trade, she's not a coder, right? And so effectively, it's just um, what I what I have this vision for is not within her skill set, right? Like what you need is someone who can code, right, to create a map that can then be used and added to easily over time. Um, if you use Google Maps, like it kind of gives you this little white map and it has like little like clustered, right? And you can kind of zoom in and try to click on the, the little, you know, and teardrop looking things, right? That are upside down. Um, and I just don't think it graphically looks great. Um, I think it's okay. It's serviceable, but I don't think it's compelling. Um, and so I, I do think we should put out a request for a proposal um, for someone who has that skill set, who could design a map um, from scratch, right? Which means you have to have coding capacity. Um, my husband is in IT, so I was talking to him about that um, in terms of like, what do we need? <laughs> if they're saying like, I just can't do this. I'm, she's looking for software. She's looking for a project that can, a product that can do it for her, right? And it just doesn't exist. Like what we kind of want is this custom piece, right? That would live on our website that we would add to over time. So I do think that while maybe short term, it's easy to put up something like a Google map. Um, I don't think it's a compelling piece that we would, you know, feel like proud of long term. So <laughs> glad you're back. Sorry. <laughs> um, and 
So I'm hoping that we can do a request for proposal to consider hiring someone to do that work. All right, my children just got back from the library and I'm very excited. Okay, um, so that's my thinking. And I don't know what the other mem members of the committee think, but I think if we have the capacity to do it, we should do it right. That's my opinion. Do we have the money and when do we have to do it by? I think it's something that we would do based on this admin budget coming up. Um, because I don't think that we can fully move an RFP through to find someone to get the work done now between now and July one, you know. So I think we're talking about next year. So it would be something that if I got the green light to develop the um, the RF, you know, request for proposal, then it would be developing it, putting out, and then it's a process. Right? Things can take months to get someone to then bring it to the committee to say we found this person you know to go from there but i think we would have to set a very specific dollar amount on the work you know or an up to a certain amount of money okay amy how much is left in the admin budget right now can't tell you that offhand. I'm sorry. If you, if I had talked to you beforehand, I certainly would have had all that ready, but. Yeah, um, no, I, I just know, I know when we talked earlier this week, you had said that there was a certain amount left in terms of um, after paying for Andrew. It was just that number I was most casting in my mind. Yeah, I guess I'd have to go back and research our emails. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but I know there's there's money left over. It's not a lot of money, but there is some money left over and that'll roll over into um, projects for next year. Yeah, I mean, the admin money that isn't used will roll into projects. It won't stay yeah. in the admin budget, of course. And so if, if there was money for this year, it would have to be expended this year. I mean, it would have to be work that's done during this year unless it were somehow... Yeah. encumbered to next year so but yeah no I'm, I'm just thinking more cancer. about having a ballpark understanding of what was left um, at, after at the end of this year would help us understand yeah right. well like I said I I do have that but, <coughs> um, but I I'm not connected to the VPN which I have to be in order to check um the files for that yeah I think we're talking about work that would be a one-time project that would probably cost between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, um, and would be designed to be something that in-house we would then maintain and be able to add to. Um, sorry, uh, Mary and then Michael. Okay, so uh, last meeting um, there was a budget uh, meeting with um, McMahon uh, Landau. Uh, McGrath Smith and Vidoviak, and there was a note that there would be a, a budget report at some point. So, would we have it? Is that still a, a real thing, or was that not really? A... We've been having a really hard time. We've, we've, been in, we've been having a hard time getting in communication with Andrew, um, not for lack of effort. And I know that he's a busy man, um, but yeah, it's, it's been difficult. So, um, you know, and there was a little bit of miscommunication at one point, Amy and Andrew did finally end up, you know, communicating, but Amy's also been working a lot with um, Tani, the auditor and other folks who can sort of help her figure pieces out. Um, Amy, what was the amount of, I know he worked on, you know, the budget book and also reconciliation um, maybe we can ask him to come to the next meeting now that that piece is done at least. I think it was $438,000 that was being reconciled from previous years from projects that were um, not completed and were being talking about uh, funds that the general were roll over. Okay, that's different from reconciliation. Um, 
Yeah, that amount is something I was working on. And it's actually, uh, I think, a little bit less because I caught an error in there somewhere. But um, that's it's a, it's a little bit less than that. But again, I don't have all that paperwork like in front of me at this moment. But I can, um, I mean, yeah. So there, there was the proposed FY23 budget, which is was already sent over. Um, you know, that's a piece that's been done. So the, the piece that we have done is what we will have for next year based on the what we ex expect from the tax levy and the state match. Um, the state match also could go up. That was recently in the news um, that um, one of the houses passed an expansion, uh, I think by $20 million to add to the CPA match this year. The other house is now taking that up um, to have that conversation. So the match could go up, but of course won't go down. Um, we did it on a conservative 35% match. So, um, that money, you know, went in or that, that proposal went forward and will go in the mayor's budget book. Um, but it's incomplete, right? Cause it doesn't include carryovers, um, and anything that's being reconciled from previous years. So that's the piece that we're still working with Andrew to figure out. We know we have this much, but we also know it's, it's higher, <laughs> but how much higher um, is a piece that we're still working on. If you would like me to share the FY23 proposed budget, I could share that. I mean, I just, it's up to you. And I, I mean, I think, I don't know if it matters only because it will be really different once we actually finish knowing what we actually have. Well, uh, but we can, it can only be, you can only spend what's approved by city council. I mean, yes, you, you have a certain period of time that you can revise it, but you can only um, actually expend. I mean, uh, it, of course that doesn't include, like you say, money that's rolled over or that went back that's, into the pot. That's true. But, that's um, and just like this year, when the CPA match came in way higher, we simply, you know, Andrew worked on an, an amendment to the city yeah. council that went through. So it's just, it's still being built right now, but I'm sure we'll have more by the July meeting. So, so uh, uh, are we gonna have him here as uh, giving a report at the next meeting, you think? I or you want, don't put that in the minutes. I'll ask. Okay, never Bye. mind. All right, so just, I'll just say he's working on it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You know, and I think this is sort of the long story of it, right? Like, it's why Amy knows doing contracts. <laughs> I think okay. like there's pieces that we're trying to figure out how to do more in house, just because it's it's sometimes frustrating waiting for other pieces to come together or be relied on. It can can slow things down, right, or make things murky. So, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I just want to see if there's anything else under other. Um, the only other piece I wanted to share was the, um, we talked earlier this year about the historic commission workflow process, right? Of um, us working with the historic commission. They're going to be taking that up at their next meeting. So we've had that conversation. We've looked at that document um, where historic projects eligibility are due a little bit earlier than other projects, or at least are earlier in the year than they have been in the past. Um, and that they will have a specific date where they all have to attend the historic commission at the same time. They have to present their projects. So it's a more streamlined process. Um, and there's also a piece in the month where, or in the cycle where the chairs of the two meet with the applicants together to make sure they understand if a preservation or you know, restriction is required, what that means, right? So it's just like that step-by-step -step process we're trying to build so that there's more clarity and projects are more streamlined for historic. So um, that is something that you know we've talked about here um, and is now going to the historic commission at their next meeting in two weeks. Um, and they're gonna look at it and vote to uh, you know, approve or, or not approve that or amend it in some way if they want to. And we'll talk about it again in July. Okay, anything else under other? Yes, Mary. Okay. I've got three big others. Okay. <laughs> okay. The first, uh, I'll give, tell you what all three of them are and you can decide. Okay, so the first one is, has Israel Rivera put in orders for McGrath Smith to speak to city council about CPA? That's one. Uh, the second one is, um, uh, in regards to the contract timeline, do you want a motion tonight? Because I'll make one up right now. 
And three, uh, what about the city hall renovations um, list? Mm, so which oh, one do you wanna do first? Um, the first one is easy. Um, no, I have to check in with Israel Rivera to sort of, um, he hasn't been present the last few meetings and I think it's, it's hard to represent the committee if you're not here. Um, so I have to check in with him to figure out um, how, to, how to best be working with him. Um, in terms of, you know, right now I'm, I'm attending meetings and speaking for the committee. And I think I have to just work with him to, to have him be that voice of the committee. Um, and also um, I did ask if, if he would do that. And I think he wasn't clear at the time what the process would be, if it would go to DGR or to the full committee. And then I think somehow it just, you know, there's other things he's dealing with, right. You know, it slipped his mind. So I'll follow back up with him around that. And oh, then, okay. So, so there's two things that you can do. One, Oh, no, I forgot the second. Okay. The first thing is, if you want to get on, then you, you, you directly write a letter to McGee and say, I want to do this. And okay. secondly, according to the emails that we got from uh, Amy right before this meeting, it looks like there is a timeline to discuss the value of CPA. So, yeah, you know, it's sort of pressing. The time is pressing. But if you yeah. want to get on, the way to do it is to write directly to um uh, Councilor McGee. Okay, yeah. you got it. Um, the second piece was around the contract motion. Yeah, I think it makes sense. <laughs> Do you want what's a reasonable timeline? Because I'll just make on a, a motion to the to the effect, a and year? then correct me before I make the motion. I the think mo that if, if something's been approved by City Council for funding, um, they should have a year to have a fully executed contract. All right. So then I move to. Um, uh, make it uh, imperative that anyone that is given that it, that has approval of a project and an approval by city council must have a signed contract within twelve months, or it is null and void. Is how does that sound? Unless there are special details that they want to include on in the original contract. For example, the MIFA theater, I mean, if you put special conditions on a particular project, Mary, yeah, you're right. That's a great idea. Well done. But there are some projects by their nature may require in the, in the composition of the contract that under extraordinary uh, circumstances, um, we wanted three years. But that's, it's just food for thought, but it's a good idea, Mary. So I'll, I'll, have been, I'll just have been the most to say, I'm not sure specific um, contract expiration dating um, in conflict with what Barry's proposed. Otherwise you go one year. So that's just, that's just something written in the contract. That contract can always be amended, yeah, right? Exactly. Like someone can create a contract and then details can, can arise amended, in the amended you know, contract, can be amended. but it has to be executed. There has yeah. to be a contract. Can be, can be amended and extended, but I think, you know, something, I'll retract that. Because I think at least one year, makes, it's going to force you to start looking at what's going on with that particular contract. You know, it gives you an opportunity to, to amend it or award it differently. Uh, all right. So, John, what, what is your addition? I would, I'm just going to second your original motion, Mary. He's withdrawing. Oh, as it is. As, as it is. Okay. Yeah. So, can I just ask for clarity? So, in other words, um, once the contract is drafted, uh, that the they have one year for it to be executed mm -hmm. no from no my understanding is it's from the moment that city council rec okay. you know agrees to recommend funding they have one year to have a fully executed contract okay but then the problem with that is that remember that i also am one person that i have to draft all these contracts and that yeah. there's a lot of back and forth so that also puts a timeline i mean it could take but longer it's a, but it's a whole year they okay. have a whole year to draft a contract. I'm just saying, I don't want to be in a project again where okay. we hit a year and someone's still like, right. oh, I don't know. Okay, so that's, uh, also I don't know. We just can't have a contract. Right. Okay, I see what you mean. All right. You know, well, Amy, it's, Amy, it's to protect had, us as a committee. Amy, has there ever been one that you can think of off the top where you absolutely couldn't do it in 12 months? Do your well, part. Well, the MIFA, the murals, because no, I never see, had that's, anything in writing. But that's not about, well, then, we're saying that's that the a applicant per can't give us the details. Right. So that right. we can't draft a contract. Right. right. That there's a problem with the project. Right. right. 
So then, we should have a mechanism. Yeah, you're right. I guess the that. other ones are are <coughs> definitely yeah doable within a year. Yeah. Um, of course, you know things could really change once Bob Parent leaves. Um, I don't know how well versed the new person will be on procurement because he's had to really help with a lot of these these projects that weren't originally part of his wheelhouse. You know, I will say though the other pieces like necessity is the mother of invention. If we go to the new person, we're like, if you don't have a signed contract in the next three months, this project won't exist. Suddenly, yeah. there's an impetus to do it. So I think it could help us on that end too. Any further discussion or debate? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Okay, awesome. And the last one is the um, city hall piece. So Amy was really great about following up with the state coalition and kept being like, yes, but we really want your opinion on this. Please give us to us. She had reached out a few times before they responded back. And they did look at the 2014 study that City Hall had, and they came back and effectively, and the pieces that, you know, I, I then, I did have a conversation with the mayor after that, um, where I said, it seems like, you know, there are pieces that they could come to us for, but most of the study is really based on how to reorganize the City Hall for like workplace organization. It's like internally, let's move these walls, those walls, this department becomes here, this department goes there, like carpeting, like stuff like we cannot do, right? It doesn't have anything to do with hist anything that's historically significant about the building or it's just not restoration and preservation. The pieces that we could do, um, he said, for example, like you wouldn't want to replace the doors, which it mentions, um, but you could ask CPA to restore these iconic, beautiful doors. And if they need to somehow be brought up to code for security standards, maybe there's a way of doing that within the context of restoration versus like, just get rid of the doors and get new doors, right? Um, if you want to handle the cracking murals in the city hall chamber, right now what's in the study is a recreation. They would just paint it on a new canvas, right? Just like, I, you know, I'm sure it would be beautiful, but it'd be totally new work. And then just take what's down there and, you know, cover it with a new canvas. And they said, you can't do that. That's recreation. That's not eligible, but you can do restoration. So similar to Lady Liberty, the sense I'm getting is like, you know, you could line it up for studies for a year, and then you use the studies to create RFPs for the actual work the following year. So if the city, if they want to put together and an eligibility application where they want to study, how would you stabilize the bell tower and make sure that it is restored and stable? How would you mean, you know, restore the doors um, in a, you know, historically friendly way um, while also bringing them up to code? How would you, um, you know, really restore the mural rather than recreate it on canvas? You know, that's something that they could put forward for a study right, to figure out how that work would be done, what the budget for that work would be, and then it would be put out for a request for a proposal the following year. So that's what's likely to come out, I think, of the, the city hall piece. Amy? Um, yeah, um, Stuart also said that the, the committee might want to consider um, possibly funding, you know, using admin funds in the future to hire a historic preservationist to really evaluate, say, for example, the murals or friezes to see um, like what actually could be restored and how much it would cost because uh, otherwise it's sort of difficult because then you just sort of, you know, they might ask for a certain amount of money without any understanding about what's really needed to do well, the work. That's my so. point, though, around like my suggestion was do what you did for Lady Liberty. Ask for them or the or Pulaski Park. Well, that was a little different because in that case, um, the committee, which you can do it that way as well. He presented both options. In that case, the money went to the Lady Liberty project rather than the committee funding that and uh, with admin funds to figure out how much to give. And, you know, so there's two there's two ways of doing it. I just know that our admin funds are so limited. Um, and like Lady Liberty, how much was the Lady Liberty? 23,000. Um, study, right? So it was 2,000 less. I don't, so it was I don't see close. how we could possibly pay for that kind of study out of admin money. 
Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. We just don't have it, right? Cambridge has five million dollars of a CPA budget. Good for them. <laughs> you know, maybe yeah. they can use admin funds in that way, but it's not something that's practical for us. Yeah, I'd true. rather you know go the other route. Um, and then you have a a scope of the work that can then be you know looked at the following year. Okay, anything for other? Mary, those were great questions. Thank you for bringing those up. Um, I just wanted to mention, I put in the chat that um, I just want people to know that there is going to be, I was speaking to Jeffrey, who is the administrative assistant for the city council, that the charter and rules committee is meeting on June 14th. Um, and that's where they'll be talking about the um, orders to revoke or reduce the CPA um, surcharge or, you know, revoke CPA completely or reduce it to only 0.5%. So he thinks that, um, Jeffrey thinks that it's, that, that they would probably um, definitely be open to, you know, CPC members or the chair speaking at that time, before, you know, during the public comment period, he believes. Just so people are, know. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing that, Amy. I think that makes a lot of sense. Folks can also write letters in if you write a letter to the chair of charters and, and charter and rules or to president McGee, they read them into the record. Right. So don't, as people have different communication styles and it may be your thing to go and, and speak out in public, or it may not be, you might just want to reach out to a friend or you might want to write a letter or write an email. It doesn't even have to be public record. It can just be, I'm sending this to you because you're my city counselor. So different communication styles, lots of different ways to get at supporting CPA for sure. All right, is there anything else anyone wants to bring up or anything you want me to be thinking about for next meeting or for future? I have on my docket that I have to figure out and fix the communication piece with for Mirko and Helene with the FY22 projects. And we, I have to, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna follow back up with the stakeholders from the MIFA conversation today to move that fold, you know, forward. Um, and we'll keep on some of the projects that we're trying to wrap up in terms of contracts and progress. Like, so the Carousel, Wayfinders, um, Miracle League. Anything else? Um, John, is this your last meeting? Or are you here one more meeting? No, this is my last meeting. That's why Gardner's on the, on the call and uh, he'll be the replacement for the Planning board. There he is. Hello, Gernander. Nice to meet you. Oh, I, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was on. I said, I'm sorry. It was a nice to meet you. I was listening to everything. I wasn't, you know, I don't think I need to be like input right now because I'm not in the committee right now. So it was a very nice meeting and uh, very nice to meet you, everybody. We're looking forward to working with you, John. I'm so sad that you only got to be with us for such a short period well, of time. It was it was uh, it was a short tenure, but I'm telling you, uh, you're a great group of people. Do a lot of good work for the city, and you know, I know you continue to do that. So, wish you all the best. And hey, I'm sure our paths will cross somewhere along the city at some point. But uh, as I explained earlier, I've got 20 years I'm finishing on the planning board, and I decided after 20 years, you know, it's time for a change. So. I informed the mayor that I would not be looking for reappointment. And so they're looking for a replacement now, but uh, Tony's agreed to step on to this committee to support work. And I want to bring him on now to, to make sure there's a smooth transition. But wish you all the best. Great group of people. John, thank, thank you. John. you. You're and doing so you. much for Holyoke. Yep, and thank he's you, promised he's going to be like, keep teaching teaching me what I need to learn more about, you know, are you the planning board or CJ committee? Yes. So we're not going to let him go. <laughs> I'm going to be bothering him all the time. <laughs> Tony, Thank I know where he man. lives, so you're all set. Uh -oh. <laughs> John, what are you going to do with all your free time? Well, I got a lot of other boards and committees I'm still involved with. So, it's, you know, it's just, it's just one less. That's all. But, you know, yeah. But all right. I told Mike Falsetto to harass my neighbors because he's downstairs for me. <laughs> I'm ready for you. <laughs> You can pop into our contract subcommittees anytime. Hey, you never know. Maybe I'll be listening in here some night, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Megan, he's not going to go far. When we go through contracts again, I'm going to be talking to him. <laughs> so he's not off the hook yet. 
Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Sorry, we went a little bit late tonight. Um, and the next meeting is in the summer. And so I'm wondering about that and where people are at in terms of vacation. Um, would July 6th work for folks or are people away? No kidding. That's the last time. I mean, I, I guess I could do that. Well, I, um, that would be difficult for me, actually. I, July 13th would, or 20th would be better, better for me. I think we normally did the second Wednesday of each month. So July 13th is the second Wednesday. I don't know. Okay. Um, does the 13th work for folks? Yep. Sure. Works for me. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's tentatively say the 13th. There's nothing honestly huge or pressing on the agenda other than the, the MIFA piece. So we'll kind of use email to check back in around that. Um, the other piece I wanted to name is that I'm hoping to do um, a screening of the CPA film um, at some point this summer, um, which of course we could do over, you know, I can share my screen. Um, and at some point I think we can do that in a public meeting or in one of our CPA meetings. Um, but I also think it would be nice to be able to look at it together so I was hoping to do something like that. Um, so I'll put that out there and maybe over email, I'll throw out some dates to um, around what that may look like. Uh, that is, it, we're, we're previewing the, uh, the, our, our uh, video or, of how we're gonna, uh, how we explain what we do when we're, uh, ordinary folks can find it and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll be able to. Um, is that gonna be red carpet? Is that formal uh, black tie or? Or, or no? No, but there might be seltzer with lime. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is about as, you know, hardcore as I get these days. <laughs> this, this will be the Holyoke Independent Film Festival. All right, there you go. Very, I like that. Good man. <laughs> all right, sounds good. All right, thank you all, people. This was lovely, and I will be seeing you in July. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, thank you all. Thank Bye you. Gone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll see you in church.